All right, so since Eric didn't dig these to a certain depth like I told him to, so these are the um, porch peered. <laughs> porch peered. Uh, por uh, grade peg pier. The pier pegs. grade pegs. Yeah. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> So today we're going to be putting steel in the footings, we're going to be adding grade pegs for the concrete, and we're also going to be adding J-bars to reinforce the wall out of the footings, and a bunch of other stuff. First on my list for today, I'm going to take my soil probe, which just is a fiberglass rod with a pointy tip on it and a T-bar handle, and you can push this thing down into the soil and test the soil to see how compact it is, how much load bearing capacity it has. And I'm gonna go around these footings with this because that's what the inspector does. And I wanna do it before he does it to make sure everything's good. That went pretty well. Everything checked out except for this one footing way down at the corner. I was able to stick the probe in about six inches and that's borderline. So I'm just gonna dig it deeper while I have the machine. And a fun story about this thing, I use it to do inspections for a local realtor on real estate transactions. And one time, right in front of the client and the homeowner, I sank this thing to the handle, whoop, into the ground, just like that, right underneath their house. And uh, that raised a few red flags. Here's a look at our steel, got delivered this morning. Number five rebar, that's 5 8 inch. We're gonna do two rows of this. And we also got two bar chairs that will hold this up off the ground, kind of in the middle of the footing vertically. I brought a toy with me today, my drone. So since I'm here and no one else is, let's send it up and see what it looks like. Right about here somewhere, we've got to put a sewer line under the footing, and we don't want it to dig that later, so what are we going to do? Um, I think first we should find out where the door's at. That's a good idea. Because you don't want to have the clean out coming out right outside your door. Real man of genius. And then... Not just a hat rack, but... <laughs> and then <laughs> we're going to put a sleeve in that's bigger than the actual sewer line. So we'll put a four-inch sleeve for a three-inch sewer line. And that way, when the plumber comes and runs it, he's got a spot to run it. Out of the house to the creek. <laughs> yeah, that's more better. <laughs> no, to the septic tank. Let's talk about our reference pins here, there and there. We just make sure we don't dig these up and we hook the string lines back. And then we have our corner back, once I run this one, of where the outside of the structure will be. Boom, super easy, as long as you don't move those things <laughs> or dig them up or run them over. Works great on a flat site. You can turn the bucket while the machine stays where it is. That's this little guy right here. This thing also has a thumb. That's this one. See that? So you can grab rocks and logs. That's fun. And uh, forwards, backwards. They're yelling at me to start digging. Look at me go. Woo, 30 bucks. 30 bucks. We didn't, we couldn't buy a short section. Here's our J-bars and Jamie tack welded a little foot yeah. to the J-bars. A little stand. So the plan is they will sit 
on our steel that's in the footings like that and we'll tie them three places that way we can put them in before the concrete is poured what's going on there bub i was just having a little low blood sugar like how low it's 55 right now there you go that's safer i'll know in five minutes what's going on. Yeah. yeah my wife just texted me she's asking uh she's asking if i saw my blood sugar <laughs> Like, no, what are you talking about? I'm gonna put this is Jason. Ray's <laughs> been asleep for the past. <laughs> now it's down to 50. Still going down? Yeah. Dude, you just ate like 50 Skittles. Yeah, it takes a minute, I guess. Hey, does he still get paid? Yeah, he gets paid. He's got type 1 diabetes. That's crap, bro. <laughs> what do you have? Here's our grade stakes, and they're just half inch rebar, 16 inches long. I'm gonna drive them in the ground about every five feet around this whole footing, and that's gonna be the top of our concrete. Ooh, that one's cut crooked. We'll try to put a flat to the top, and we'll use our concrete rakes to kind of tap, tap, tap on the concrete till we get the concrete level with these all the way around. I'm gonna set them with my laser level, and I'll show you what that looks like. I'm gonna go around with this grade stick checking to find an average depth of the bottom of my footings and then i'm going to move the reader down eight inches from that and that will give me eight inches of concrete from the bottom of the footing to the top of the grade stake all right i'm going to clamp it on at 11 inches <laughs> a lot of people would say this is overkill doing this every five feet but if you're gonna lay the block yourself man it is so much easier to have a nice level footing i don't lay block but they they tell me it's better that way. <laughs> it's way better <laughs> mm. that didn't look great over there these are the porch pier grade pegs. And it's hard to say, bro. <laughs> we didn't dig these footings to any specific depth. Like I told him to. Like he told me to. So we're just going to stick these out of the bottom one foot. So we know we have one foot deep in every one. Are the grade peg pier The pier pegs. grade pegs. Yeah. <laughs> what he said. Here's one good reason to wear pants when you're putting in grade pegs. The top edge of them is like a razor. So one got me. I will survive, but I'm gonna be a lot more careful now that I'm walking around. Now that the grade pegs are done, we have to pull these string lines back and get this thing all squared up again. Just double check ourselves, because we have to do these J bars and they have to be a specific distance from the outside of the structure so that they hit in the center of the cores of the block. And so they have to be pretty exact or we can't lay the block. We've got our rebar going in. Good job, Ray Ray. Thanks. It's getting tied to the chairs. It's getting lapped two feet. You can see there is the minimum lap joint and tied to itself. Okay, let it rip. Here it is. Oh, yeah. This little tool also has a cutter. That's for five eighths there, and then around the fronts for half inch. I would not recommend cutting five eighths with this though, because it's too much for me. Jason can do it sometimes. We're using these little pre-made wire tie things that you know this this special tool. I don't know what that's called. Whirly gig. Whirly gig. Uh, cancer and reproductive harm. Anyway, people that do this for a living, I think they're called rod busters, the guys that are really good at this. I don't think they do this. I think this is like a homeowner kind of version of, of tying rebar. So I think they prefer just a spool of wire and some lineman pliers, and they can probably do it about 10 times faster than I can. Probably. Yeah. No self-respecting rod buster uses those kind of ties. <laughs> Come on. 
Not ideal. Time for a new tape. It worked. So that we can place these J bars. I don't know why they call them J bars. It's more like an L bar. I, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, we've made a little tick mark and red marker every four feet down this line, but four inches extra out of the corner. So four foot four, eight foot four, 12 foot four, 16 foot four, 20 foot four. There it is, you get the idea. Yeah, you get the idea. And we will set these J bars in line with that and four inches off the line like that. These have to be really precise or they won't come out right. I think I said that already, um, but we've <laughs> had issues before where we had some masons not spend as much time doing this. As much, you mean any time? Or any time, and then none of them come out in the right spots. Bucket We've been trying to get rid of these rebar ties for years. They've been in a bucket at our shop. Who left my rebar ties in the rain? There it is, folks. Past inspection, we got all the rebar, all the J-bars, all the grade pegs. We do need to get some more rebar caps for safety. So that's a wrap for today and this video. Thanks for building with us today. We'll see you next time. Thanks for building with us.